Hello and welcome to another NGen Math 7 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we're going to be doing Unit 2, Lesson 6 on adding and subtracting graphically. All right. So for the last few lessons, you know, we had two lessons where we added signed numbers. We talked about zero sum pairs and how things cancel when you add and when you add two numbers that are one's positive, one's negative, right? Then we looked at subtraction. You know, what happens when you subtract a larger positive from a smaller positive? What happens when you subtract a negative? You know, we even looked in the last lesson at how you can change subtraction into addition. All right. In this lesson, what we want to do is try to visualize the process of adding and subtracting signed numbers by using number lines. And I don't think anything that we do in this lesson is going to be a particular surprise as long as you've mastered most of what we had in the last few lessons. This one, though, is going to help you really be able to picture what's going on when you add and subtract signed numbers. So let's get right into it in the first exercise. Here we go. Adding and subtracting positives on a number line. All right. So this is literally what's happening when we have a number plus a positive number or a number minus a positive number. Exercise number one. The following number line has a point located at 12 as shown. Answer the following questions using this number line. Letter A, real simple. What is the result of 12 plus 6? How can we show this using the point 12 on the number line? Well, this is about as easy as it gets, number one, because there's no negatives involved here. We all know Oh my, well maybe it's not that easy. Let me get rid of that weird looking 12. There we go. So we all know that 12 plus 6 is 18. And where is 18 on the number line? It's right here. But what does it really mean to show it? Well, the point is the following, right? When we started at the number 12 and we added 6 to it, it was like we were just moving this point, right, six units to the right, right? So when we added six to 12, it moved it six units to the right. Letter B. What is the result of 12 minus seven? How can you show this using the point 12 on the number line? Well, again, the actual result of the calculation is very simple, right? No negatives involved. 12 minus seven is five as we well know. And of course for that, what we're really doing is we're moving it seven units left. And this should make all the sense in the world in terms of what number lines really are. When we add a positive, it doesn't matter to what number, when we add a positive we move that number that many units to the right. And when we subtract a positive, we move that number that many units to the left. Now this is kind of comfortable territory for you, right? Because it's all a positive plus a positive and a positive minus a smaller positive. Let's now go on and look at this and get some negative numbers involved. All right. Well, what we just talked about, I kind of review here. Adding a positive number moves another number to the right and subtracting a positive moves another number to the left. So let's take a look at exercise two. Points are plotted at negative four and seven on the number line below. Answer the following questions. Letter A, what is the result of seven minus 10? Show this on the number line. All right, well, you've been doing some problems like this for a little while. So what I'd like you to do is figure out what the result of seven minus 10 is, plot it on the number line, and then maybe think about it in terms of the movement that we were talking up, about up there. Go ahead and do that. All right, well, simple enough. Depending on how you want to think about it, you know, you could um, change this subtraction into an addition, right? We could think of that this is seven plus negative 10, all right, which would give me a net result of negative three. That would be sitting right here. Now, hopefully it's pretty obvious that if we're here at seven, Right, and if we go to the left 10 units, right, we are then sitting at negative three. So it's a fantastic way of thinking about seven minus 10. Ah, well, seven minus 10 should be, if I'm at seven on a number line, 
and I go to the left 10 units, I end up at negative 3. It's just a nice way of using the number line to think about what the result of this subtraction should be. And now let's do an addition. Letter B, what is the result of negative 4 plus 10? Show this on the number line. All right, great. Why don't you go ahead and do that? And again, check out that whole movement left-right business. All right, well, negative 4 plus 10. We've been working on this for a little while. Four negatives would cancel four positives, and that would leave me with a positive 6. Here's that negative 4 that I'm starting at. And if I move it 10 units to the right, I'm at positive 6. Right? And again, it's kind of a neat way to look at it. You could think to yourself, okay, well, if I'm trying to visualize what negative 4 plus 10 is, if I start at negative 4 on the number line and I move 4 units, I'm up to 0. And then I add another 6 units and I'm up to positive 6. It's a real, real nice way to be able to visualize the addition and the subtraction of a positive number on the number line. Let's look at one more piece in this exercise to make sure you have it. Letter C. What two numbers would lie 7 units away from 2 on the number line? Show calculations that lead to your answer and illustrate on the number line. All right, well think about this a little bit. All right, pause the video and see if you can find the two numbers that lie seven units away from the number two on this number line and how that relates to addition and subtraction. All right, well let's actually do the seven units away from two and then write down the addition and subtraction. Here's my number two, right? And if I went one, two, three, four, five, six, seven to the right, I'd be at nine, right? And of course, that corresponds to seven plus two is equal to nine. On the other hand, if I went left by seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right, seven to the left, well, that would be negative 5, and that corresponds to 2 minus 7. All right. So we can think about adding and subtracting positive numbers in terms of moving to the right if we're adding and moving to the left if we're subtracting. Now, we should also take a look a little bit about adding and subtracting negative numbers and what effect that has in terms of moving a point on the number line. Let's do that in the next exercise. Here we go. Adding and subtracting negatives moves the points in the opposite direction. Surprise! <laughs> negatives are all about opposites, right? So let's take a look at exercise number three. A point is located at four on the number line below. Do the following. Letter A, what is four plus negative nine? Plot this point. What effect did adding a negative number have on the location of the point? Well, let's do this together. And again, the result here will probably surprise absolutely no one, right? So if I've got 4 plus negative 9, 4 positives cancel with 4 negatives, and we're left with a net negative 5, right? Now, no great surprise, adding a negative 9 made us go to the left 9 units. And of course, the reason that's not a surprise is that adding a negative 9 is the same as subtracting a positive 9, right? Think about that equivalence between subtraction and addition of opposites. So 4 plus negative 9 is simply the same as 4 minus positive 9, which takes the number 4 and moves it 9 units to the left and puts us at negative 5. And not surprisingly, let's take a look at letter B. What is 4 minus negative 3? Plot this point. What effect did subtracting a negative number have on the location of the point? Well, almost by the definition of how we do this problem, we already know the answer. So when we do the subtraction of a negative, we always change it into the addition of the opposite. So 4 minus negative 3 is going to be the same as 4 plus positive 3. That ends up being 7. And again, to no great surprise, we end up moving it three 
units right. Now, again, not a surprise. And let's be very honest. The most important thing I want you to get out of this is the idea of adding a positive number, shifting you to the right, and subtracting a positive number, shifting you to the left. These two then kind of follow from that. Let's do one final exercise. This one's kind of cool because it's a practical and extremely cold example. So if you're watching this video and you live in like northern Wisconsin or northern Minnesota or something like that, right, an ex exercise like this will sound very familiar. If on the other hand you grew up in, I don't know, let's say southern California, Malibu, something like that, then something like this might be completely foreign to you. Let's take a look at exercise number four. A cold night in January starts with a temperature of 7 degrees Fahrenheit, as shown in the diagram. Overnight, the temperature drops by 13 degrees Fahrenheit. Give an expression that gives the temperature in the morning, evaluate the expression, and plot the point on the number line. All right, why don't you go ahead and try to do letter A on your own. All right, well this is actually kind of simple enough, right? I'm starting up here at positive seven, and the temperature is gonna drop by 13, right? So it's gonna drop by seven degrees, that's gonna put me down at zero, then it's gonna drop another six degrees, and that's gonna put me down at negative six. Now specifically, that corresponds to the following. It corresponds to seven degrees minus 13 degrees is equal to negative six degrees. We've literally moved that down seven units. Right? Now letter B. From the morning until noon, the temperature rises by eight degrees Fahrenheit. Give an expression that calculates the temperature at noon, evaluate the expression, and plot it on the number line. All right, so now we're at negative six. The temperature rises by eight degrees Fahrenheit. By noon, where are we at? Man, this is cold. All right, now, obviously, what we're doing here is we're saying, look, if I've got, if I'm down here at negative six, and I add to it eight, where am I at? Well, first I go up six degrees to get to zero, then I have another two degrees that I'm gonna go up, and I'm at two, right? Now, you should have already known that negative six plus eight is two, and seven minus 13 is negative six. But what's kind of great is our temperature gauge here really gives us that sense of, oh, when I subtracted, I went down or to the left, and then when I added, I went up or to the right, depending on which way this number line is oriented. All right, very important to understand adding and subtracting, especially adding and subtracting positive numbers using a number line. Let's summarize, all right? or we'll try to summarize. Let's go to the next page. There we are, final page. Okay, so real important. You know, if we have a number on a number line, doesn't matter whether it's positive, negative, or zero, and we add a positive to it, it moves it to the right by that many units. If we have a number on the number line and we subtract a positive from it, it moves it to the left. And this is a fantastic way of thinking to yourself, well, if I had two minus five, if I was sitting at two and I subtracted five from it, I would be at negative three on the number line. A really nice way of visualizing that. Or if I'm at negative seven on the number line and I add nine to it, that's going to put me at positive two when I move nine units to the right. All right, so we're eventually now going to be getting into things like multiplying and dividing sign numbers. And you wanna make sure you've got your addition and subtraction down before you get into those two. I'd like to thank you for joining me for another NGen Math 7 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until next time, keep thinking and keep solving problems.